Hello, I'm Rishi Kotaro, and I'm going to be doing the stock knowledge session with y'all. Um, these are some pictures um, I have. Uh, this is when I got to go to the Taj Mahal this summer in India, and this is me going to Rajasthan to meet my grandparents. So a little bit about my investing journey. Um, I learned about stocks and investing in sixth grade. This was around like 2018. Um, I was just, I was like one of those kids that just wanted to make money. We was just like obsessed with money. So uh, one day I was just at school, just during lunch, I was uh, searching up on YouTube, how to make money. And I came across a video and uh, there was an ad that came up before the video. It says uh, stock and investing changed my life and it can change yours too. And I, I just got hooked up onto it. Uh, after that ad then i went home later that day and i asked my mom and, and dad uh what a stock was and what's the stock market so they explained to me a uh, stock was pretty much a share in the company you're pretty much just a partial owner of the company and after that i just really got hooked up onto it and uh after a month or so um they opened me a Robinhood account and I got to buy AMD, Apple, and Microsoft. So that's pretty much how it all started. Um, in seventh grade, I was learning about earnings, dividends, support resistance, trend lines, and the other basic stuff. I was just like looking up on my free time, um, like how like how does this thing work? How does how to draw support resistance? Um, how to draw trend lines? Then on eighth grade, uh, I ran into uh, trading view a charting platform and i practiced my technique on different company stock charts and i just kept on improving and improving i was just improving my best i was just better like i was just trying to do it better like because practice makes better like yeah um in ninth grade i opened a thinkorswim account and started using paper money. Um, I was just testing new strategies for swing trading because I got hooked up onto that. And once I figured out a strategy that worked for me, I started implementing it on the real trades and I made over $500 that summer. That one, that, that one was like, I was crazy over that. My first 500 on that. Um, this current summer, 10th grade, I'm learning about options. And I tried new option and risk management strategies, um, doing like stop losses and stuff and on thinkorswim. And with the confidence I've made, uh, I implemented it into real trades and I made over $2,000 in options this summer. And I was very proud of myself. So what is a stock? A stock is pretty much an investment that represents a share or partial ownership of a company. Um, when you invest a stock, uh, you can buy and sell stocks on a brokerage uh, account, uh, and you can open up these accounts on TD Trade, Robinhood, Fidelity, and Webull. Um, I have a question for y'all. I was wondering if y'all know what this building is. Just drop it in the chat. If y'all know what this building is right here. I see. I try to make it like interactive, so. Anyone know what this building is? This is the inside of this. Yeah, it's on the Wall Street. It's on the Wall Street. But does anyone know the name? Okay, so I'll tell you right now. Um, this is the Newark Stock Exchange. And this is pretty much the trading floor inside of this building right here. Um, does anyone know who this person is? Um, I'll give you all a hint. Um, he is the most photographed person on the Wall Street right now. Uh, take some guesses, might as well. And he looks kind of like Albert Einstein. Uh, no, this is not Warren Buffett. Um, no. Good guess, though. 
Okay, I'll tell you all who this is. Uh, this is Peter Tuckman. Uh, he is a stockbroker on the uh, trading floor. He, on any given day, he will trade uh, tens of millions of dollars worth of assets. He has, uh, he has clients who give him money pretty much, and he just makes trades for him. And he makes a commission based on the performance. And according to his performance, he's doing good because he has a net worth of around a billion dollars. Crazy. Um, okay, so different types of trades. So there's scalping, day trading, swing trading, and position long term trading. Scalping is pretty much buying and holding a stock for a couple of seconds to minutes before selling. Uh, usually, usually, like if you go on TikTok, uh, you'll see like people um, saying that they make like thirty k, like thirty thousand dollars. It's like 45 seconds that's because they they put a lot of money into these option contracts uh so they look up look for these breakout stocks and they put a whole bunch of money into these option contracts and if the contracts go up then they're making a whole bunch of money because they invested more money into it but that's also risky because if it does not go in your favor then you'll be you're gonna be losing a lot of money off that um, the next one is day trading. So this is pretty much buying a stock and selling, buying a stock at the beginning of the day and selling it by the end of the day. Uh, I know my, my parents, uh, usually do this with their, um, with their job on the side. Um, I know Sai uncle and his analysts probably do this too. Um, then next, this is swing trading. So this is what I do. This is pretty much buying a stock and holding it for one day to a couple of weeks or a couple of months before selling it. For this, uh, you don't really have to look at the market. Um, I'd say maybe just look at the market uh, like once a day to see how the stock is doing and if it's going in your favor. Um, if it's going in your favor, then uh, you can ride the trend and uh, make your money. And if it's not, going in your favor then you can sell it and cut your losses right there then there is position and long-term trading this is a person who buys and holds his stock for more than one year so these are going to be most of the people in here and position and long-term trading is good if you have the patience for it like trading is like investing is all about patience so after uh after like couple after like couple of 10 20 years um, once you retire, uh, if you invest at a very young age, you will be sitting at a very good amount of wealth. I'll show you that later in a couple of slides. Uh, important, more important things to know before investing. Um, a stock symbol. This is the ticker symbol. So you got to know what you're trading. So ticker symbols are like AAPL, MSFT, AMD, UAL, LUV. Um, all those are ticker symbols. Those are all ticker symbols of companies. Um, Next, there is a bear and bull market. So when someone says that we are in a bear market, they're saying that the stock market is down. And when someone says that we're in a bull market, they, they're saying that the market is up. Shorting a stock means that you think that the stock will go down and going long is pretty much you think that the stock will go up. Um, usually, usually when people short stocks, um, they will buy put options. I'm not gonna go too too deep into options, but um, they, they'll buy put options, uh, meaning that they're gonna bet that the stock will go down so they can make money both ways if the market is up or down. Then uh, for people who think uh, the stock will go long, then they'll buy call options and they'll make money off that. The next one is, is trade with the trends. So this is actually very important. Um, I'm gonna say it again, trade with the trends. Uh, so if, if we're in a bear, if, so if we're in a bull market and stocks are going up, you wouldn't wanna be buying puts. You'd want to get 
you would want to get calls. You would want to get, you would want to get stocks. Um, if there is a bear market, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be wanting to buy calls. You'd want to get puts because the stock is down. The market is in a downtrend. Um, the next one is you got to figure out what the stock does. You got to research the company before investing. Um, this is actually very important because this is real money you're putting into a company. This is money that you believe will make you return. This company should be a company that you can trust and you think that will make you a return. The next one is long and short-term capital gain. Okay, so for long-term cap to qualify for long-term capital gain, you have to hold a stock for more than a year before selling it. And to qualify for a short-term capital gain, you have to hold and sell a stock for less than a year um, to qualify for short-term capital gain. Um, usually, usually long-term capital gain will you have to pay less taxes on that and you will have to pay more taxes on short term because short term there's more like there's like less risk involved in you holding stock um okay important things to know before investing there's a difference between trading and investing Investing, people get those two terms confused. They think investing and trading are the same thing, but in reality, it's actually not. Um, trading is pretty much just buying and selling assets uh, frequently. And investing is just over time, over a period of years. Um, it's all about patience. Investing is all about patience. I mean, they're both about patience, but investing mainly. The next one is the PE ratio. Um, this pretty much tells you if the company is uh, undervalued or overvalued. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but pretty much stocks with a PE ratio of 25 and above are considered expensive and 20 are cheap and good for long-term investors. This is also dependent on the sector, and I'll show you that at the end of the session. So if you, if you want, we can search up some PE ratios of companies. Uh, if y'all want to drop some tickers down below right now. So this one has a P ratio of 24.74. According to our uh, according to our rule, it says stocks with a PE ratio above 25 are usually expensive. So this is actually a good price. Um, so it's, it's a good price. So that's good. Um, you all want to look at PXD? Okay. Uh, price is 242. Um, its PE ratio is 10, so it's currently undervalued. But we have to look according based on the industry, and I'll show you all that later, uh, later throughout, later at the end of the session. Okay. Um, the next one is dividend. A dividend is pretty much a distribution of the company's earnings to its shareholders. To its shareholders. Uh, to put it in terms, the company just gives you a small gift for owning shares in the company. That's pretty much all it is. Um, dividends are usually paid on a quarterly basis, and there are four quarters in a year, so you'll get dividend from one company four times throughout the year. The next one, it is important to set up a stop loss. Stop losses will prevent you from losing a lot of money, and it will help you save some money. Usually, I like 10 to 15 percent um, of my trade, my trade price. That's what I just like it at. Um, I like selling stop losses because the stock keeps the stop loss. It keeps on going up with the price. So I don't know if you can like see my screen, uh, like see my uh, see my camera. But if the stock price just keeps on going up, the the trailing stop loss will just trail behind it. So 
it allows you to reap all the profits um, with still knowing, still knowing that you're protected by the stop loss, which is very good. The next one is diversification is key. Yes, this is actually very important. Uh, diversification. You want to diverse. You don't want to put all your money into one stock. You want to diversify into different stocks, uh, different sectors, maybe healthcare sector, some technology sector, some energy sector, some EV sector. Like you know, like you know what I mean. So yeah, because it also reduces the I'm, risk. I'm listening to the video. I don't know. Are you talking to me? Oh, I said <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Um, is the risk uh for one stock? So if you if you put your all your investment or all your money into one stock, and if the stock falls, then you lose all your money. But if you diversify it into different stocks, if one falls, you'll still have uh the other like four or five stocks that you invested in, so you don't got to worry about that. Uh, the next one is stock prices don't move continuously in one direction. So if a stock price is going up and up and up, it's not going to keep on going up forever. It has to come down. There always has to be a pullback. And same with it going down. If the market's just going down and down and down, it's it's all it's always going to have a pull. It's going to always revert up eventually. So you always got to take advantage of that. So what are earnings? Earnings pretty much refer to a company's profits in a quarter. They tell you how the company is progressing throughout the year. So if any of y'all want to guess what companies reported these two earnings, go ahead in the chat and I'll tell y'all if y'all are right. I'll give you a hint. These these earnings were reported last week. Um, I think so. Yeah, last week. All right, no, uh, no, it's not HP. Yeah, yeah, the show got it right. Does anyone know the other one? All right, I'll just tell y'all. Um, the left one is Walmart, and the right one is Target. So as we can see with the Walmart, uh, they beat their earnings, so their stock price actually went up. Um, I think like four or five dollars. Uh, the following day, um, yeah. And uh, one of size analysts, um, they they gave a really good play on this, very good option play. I usually don't take uh, option plays on earnings because yeah, high levels of risk. And then on this one, this is actually Target. You see Target missed their earnings with uh, pre-market, which led their stock price to decline 3% that day. So around five bucks. So yeah, like I said, um, I don't really, I don't really play on earnings after I heard uh, Sai's story. Uh, I, I'll tell y'all Sai story real quick. Um, so pretty much Sai, um, he got he, he put so he figured out um that a company was having earnings and he saw uh a high level person I I think it was the CEO or someone uh they were investing a whole bunch into the company uh right before earnings. So what Sai thought, he thought that the company's earnings might become good. So he also invested a lot into this, uh, into the company. And the following day, like, I think he even trade, I, th I think he even took margin on this. Uh, I don't know for sure, but he, he invested a whole bunch of money into this right before earnings. And right when the earnings report came out, the stock just plummeted down and he lost so much money. Um, so yeah, after hearing uh, Sai's story, um, I, I usually don't play on options. Um, I don't play on earnings now. Um, maybe I will in the future uh, once I get more experience, but yeah. 
So this is the safest way to invest. Um, I like this way a lot. This is through the SPY, the S&P 500. Uh, the S&P 500 is composed of the 500 large cap U.S. stocks. So this is like um, meta platforms, uh, Apple, Microsoft, Google, um, all those like really big companies. Um, they're all composed in an index, the S&P 500 index, and you can pretty much invest into it. So there's two things. There's an index, and then there's the ETF. The index is worth around $4,000, which makes it very hard for people to invest into it who don't really have that much money. So that's why they created a ETF trust, which pretty much just tracks the index. So, and the ETF trust is way more affordable. It's around like four, um, around, It's not coming up to my phone, but it's around like four hundred dollars, around maybe four thirty, uh, four twenty, somewhere around there. And this makes it more affordable to average investors like you and me. So pretty much, if the index is up, the trust will be up, and if the index is down, the trust will be down. Uh, the S and P five hundred indicates the financial health and stability of the economy. So if the economy so if the market is up, so if the S&P 500 is up, that means the market is up. And if the S&P 500 is down, then that means the market is down pretty much. The S&P 500 has a 8% gain per year. This is actually very good uh, over time. Over time, this will actually make you a lot of money. And I'll show you how. Um, pretty much maxing out your 401k will make you crazy money when you retire. Uh, my plan in the future is when I get my job, I'm going to open up a 401k. For those of y'all who don't know what a 401k is, it is pretty much a retirement account um, where it is provided through your employer and you can invest it for your retirement and all the money uh, you make inside of it is just going to be tax free by the time you retire. This calculator has Then um, let's say let's say start off with um, and anyone you want to max our four hundred one k, which you can put a for you all the way and for us. Say you retire at like around sixty nine million seventy thousand four hundred seventy seven dollars in thirty. So over time, uh, let's do some quick math. But put nine hundred thousand over four years, and that investment will turn into nine million six thousand four hundred and that's the People say, um, people are wondering how to become rich. So getting rich, it's going to take time. This is, so this is something everyone wants to know. Um, it's not easy and it's not, there's no fast way to get rich. Um, 
but having multiple streams of income will help you achieve financial freedom quicker. So stuff you can do is pretty much have investments. So uh, invest in stocks, bonds, futures, all that. Um, you can start Amazon FBA fulfillment by Amazon. Uh, you can start your own pressure washing company. You can start drop shipping. You can start uh, rental houses. Um, you can start uh, vending machine business. Uh, you can start car rental business. You can do a whole bunch of stuff out there um, on your free time. And the good thing about these things is you can form an LLC, a limited liability company, and you can put all of your investments under your own LLC and you can qualify for tax deductions, which will help you save a lot of money in the long run. Um, some stocks that are looking good according to institutional investments. So ticker symbol SIX, uh, I mean, it's an amusement park stock. I'm actually currently invested into it and I'm actually currently a customer of it. Um, I don't know if y'all can see, but uh, this is my Six Flags Pass right here. Um, I'm a customer of it. I actually like the place. It's actually very fun. I have uh, Six Flags uh, five minutes away from my house. And yeah, just a lot of fun rides, a lot of cool things over there. Um, the next one is EYE, ticket symbol EYE. This is eye care. They provide contact lenses, eyeglasses, and eye exams to people. The next one is ORA. Um, it supplies alternative and renewable geothermal energy technology. Um, then the next one is Grab. Uh, it's an app based in Southeast Asia, uh, specifically Singapore, and offers and offers varieties of products such as food delivery and investment products. How do you investment products? Pretty much any growth stock in the market is a buy. Uh, any any pullback is an opportunity to invest into it. Um, so you always you can't be fearful of the market. Um, as Warren Buffett says, be greedy when others are fearful. So what he means by this is when others are fearful, they will tend to sell off their positions. And when people sell off the positions, uh, it will lead a stock price to fall lower so this is your time to be greedy and take all those shares and hold them up for the long run because like i said a stock can't keep on going down forever it will have to reverse back up eventually so yeah so once you accumulate all those shares uh you hold on to it for a while and then yeah and you'll be sitting in a lot of money right there. Uh, next, uh, the market is pretty much about supply and demand. Um, when supply is high and demand is low, uh, stock prices will usually tend to trend lower. Uh, and when demand is high and supply is low, then stock prices will shoot up to the moon. And yeah. Um, I took some pictures of institutions owning for DNA. Uh, we see Bale Gifford. Um, uh, we see that he increased. We see Viking Global. We see Kathy Woods and her ARC investments. We see Vanguard. They've all increased shares into DNA. Um, these companies, these companies, uh, these institutions, they have uh, all these like smart mathematicians, all these smart people. So we could uh, follow what they're doing and can make a good amount of money. Uh, for ORA, we see BlackRock and Vanguard. We see that they both increased shares. So this is also looking good. Um, we see BlackRock, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Vanguard. We see they've all increased shares uh, for Six Flags. So it's all looking good, and these are all uh, notable name companies. These are all these are all companies. Uh, these are all institutions that are famous and are have a good reputation. So we can tell them. 
going in the future. In the future, this is just my, my opinion. Um, I'm thinking electric vehicles by 2025. Um, electric vehicles will just explode. Um, so some stocks are like Neo, Tesla, Lucid, ChargePoint, Blink. Uh, these are all good companies for the EV space right now. Artificial intelligence, yes. Um, I have a feeling robots will just take over the world in the next uh, in the next coming years. Um, robots will just start replacing jobs. Uh, I, I think some of us can agree with that. Um, so artificial intelligence stocks that I like are PLTR and NVIDIA, Plantar Technologies and NVIDIA. The next one is, is marketing and sales. So this one, uh, this is actually very important because every single year, there's so much new companies, new businesses being created and new like brands being created. So uh, these companies, they're willing to pay for marketing. They're, they're willing to pay to get their uh, company's name out there. They're willing to get their brand out there. So they're willing to pay big bucks for this. So some, Stocks I found was ISIG and OMC. The next one I see is 3D printing. Uh, I specifically see 3D printing houses is a big thing in the future, uh, just because it will make everything more efficient. So I see BDD, um, 3D systems, and SSYS is good uh, stocks to invest in. The next one I see is healthcare. Uh, Cy, I think Cy even put this one in the chat, uh, LNTH, but I see healthcare is booming because um, there's always health problems in the world and all these companies are uh, trying to find fixes to them. So um, yeah, um, LNTH is a good one. They've uh, been positive. They've had positive growth for like the last uh, couple of years, which is good. Um, and there's T Doc, Teladoc Health, and there's Johnson and Johnson, uh, COVID vaccine, known for its COVID vaccines. Then we see the renewable energy is a growing industry too. Um, we see um, this is pretty much like saving the planet, um, cutting down, um, helping with global warming, uh, helping reduce global warming and helping the climate pretty much. Uh, we see NEE and ORA good investments. For ORA, we have, we've already seen institutions investing into it. So uh, we could see uh, they doing in this, so they probably think that this will be something big in the future too. Then the next one we see is technology. We see Amazon, Apple, AMD, Visa, Uber. These are all very good companies. Technology, uh, there, there's more technologies coming out in the future. Um, I have a feeling for that. So just be on the lookout. So this is some of, my, some of the money I made off swing options trading. Um, I've just been swinging options, so I've been holding it for a day and then selling it the next day. So 370, 50, uh, 370, 148, 2150, 128, 24, 30, 128, or 28. So my biggest investment regrets, uh, not cutting my position when I lose 20% of a trade. Um, so this is what happened with me in Jamia. For those of y'all who don't know what Jamia is, Jamia is a e-commerce company in Africa. It's also known as the Amazon of Africa. So I got into the stock around $30 and now it's trading at eight. Um, when I saw this, when the first time I saw this fall, uh, I thought, uh, it would just come back up. I thought this was just a temporary fall. So I thought I was just holding it. I thought it would come back up. Then slowly over a period of time, I see this thing just plummeting to the floor. And 
now that was, it's just trading at eight but i'm keeping my positions because i'm in it for the long run and i could potentially see jamia get acquired by amazon once amazon is looking to grow in africa so, yeah and if that happens then i'll be i'll be sitting with good money right there uh, my next one is not holding on to my Ethereum. So back when I started um, trading, uh, my parents opened me a Robinhood account uh, and I actually bought Ethereum because you can actually buy crypto on Robinhood. So I bought Ethereum at, um, I think at, I, bought, I bought two Ethereum at $100 each. So we'll say like 200 and the price of it right now is 1600 so i missed out on i missed out on 3200 around like 3000 around like 3000 dollars yeah on profits just on profits uh, my parents wanted me to move over to tdma trade cuz uh robin hood back then had a lot of bugs um, and my parents were also trading on TD Ameritrade. So they thought um, we can also get access to his account too. So yeah. Uh, the next one is not having patience. Um, I see, yeah, this one, this one I have a big problem with. Um, I've been doing all my analysis and I, I just tend to sell when I see the stock just going lower and lower. Um, like I don't, um, uh, I I what I was gonna say. so yeah, patience is key. Patience is key to investing. Um, over time, uh, I had, I had, uh, some really good long-term stocks and I don't remember them off the top of my head, but, um, I saw them in a loss. Um, I sold it off, and now it's probably like double, triple its value. So I should have just hold on to it. Um, the next one is don't become emotionally attached to a stock. Um, this is with this is my experience with MG and I, uh, Magnite. Um, uh, I got the stock at around. Um, I would say I think six dollars. It went all the way up to around um fifty, sixty, somewhere around there. And I didn't take my profits. I did not take my profits. Um and now the stock price is uh I think a little bit a little bit under ten or a little bit above ten. Uh I don't know exactly off the top of my head. But I lost off I lost off. I lost out on around two hundred, three hundred dollars with the profits right there, and now I'm only in twenty dollar profits. So yeah, my next one is don't trade meme stocks. Um, I learned this through GME uh, GameStop. Uh, if y'all don't know, this was one of the first stocks trending on Wall Street bets. Um, I thought. Um, I got in at a high price. I got in at around, um, I think like around 300. And um, I got in, I thought it would go up. So I, I, good thing I only invested one share. So um, it was already pretty high at 300. So pretty much I lost $75 before cutting my losses. And I never traded a meme stock after that. Um, pretty much, I, I didn't even get into BBY, BBBY. This one was, BBBY was trending on Wall Street um, bets this last week, and it went up a lot. I didn't even get into it. And now it's plummeted to the floor. Um, I think it's around like $9. So yeah. The next one is not sticking to the trade plan. Um, yeah, I'd be doing, again, I'd be doing this analysis. I'd be setting my target. I'd be setting my stop loss. Then I don't even follow them. 
So I got to learn to follow my trade plan. Uh, don't buy a stock when it's at the 52 week high. I learned this through AMD. I got AMD when it first broke 100. Um, I got in at around 140 and it fell to 120 um, after I got in and I just cut my losses. And right, right as soon as it went to 120, it went up to 160. I was like, gosh dang it. Um, so bad. Um, so yeah. Um, the next one is buy low, sell high. This is this is actually common sense, but many people still fail to do this. Like I personally fail to do this. Like as I told you, with AMD and Jamia and DME. Uh, uh, yeah, I fail to do this, but buy low, sell high. That's the only way you'll make money off this. Leverage trading. Um, this one, you can use uh, the broker's money for trading. Uh, you can take something called a margin. And margin will, usually you'll get around maybe 20, 20, 30K from the broker. And you have more money to invest with. You have more money to play with. But it also comes with the risk. That's the thing. So you always got to be, uh, have risk management strategies off this. Uh, like I said, don't put all your money in one stock. You got to diversify in different types of sectors, uh, different types of stocks. Because like I said, if you put in one stock and if the stock goes down, then you lose all your money. But if you diversify it, if one stock goes down and the rest go up, then uh, yeah, you'll still make money off that. Uh, my forecast in the market. So I am not a guru by any means, but I do think that the market will fall. Um, we saw a slight fall on Friday. Uh, yesterday, we saw a slight fall. Um, I see that the 2022 spy trend is from the 2008 spy trend. And in 2008, we saw a big fall. Um, another thing is that since midterm elections are coming up, um, it's likely that we will see another downfall because through the previous years uh, of midterm elections happening, we've seen a downfall in the SPY. I've also been seeing a lot of institutions and high level people selling their shares, leading me to believe that the market will fall. And many people are thinking, um, there is a possibility of a recession. And if a recession does happen, all these stock prices will be heavily discounted. This is the time for you to take the opportunity of your lifetime and just get a bunch of shares. Just hold on to it, have patience. And over, over years, over years of time, uh, your wealth will start, start building up. And uh, lastly, I also see people fearing over the increase of the 75 point basis hike for interest rates. So yeah. So this is the 2018 spy trend. Um, when elections happened and this is right before elections, uh, we see that the market fell. So then it started rally. Right here, we see the market fall, and then we see a rally. Right here, we see it fall right before elections, and then after elections, it started a rally. And then we are looking right here, we are looking at the 2008 and the 2022 spy trends. So on the right side, it's the 2008, and the left side is the 2022. Um, we see right here, we see this top, uh, we can correlate, correlate it to right here. Then we see this bottom, we see it right here. Then we see this, this bottom right here. Then we say this. And now we are somewhere like right around here, right here. And now uh, we are looking for a fall dead back down. Um, maybe, maybe beyond this 200 EMA. So yeah. 
it's going to be a look on that. Uh, we are nearing to the end. So these are some resources I like to use. I'll show you. So I'll show you some of these. Um, I'll walk you through some of these. So the first one is the Think Savvia website. Uh, it takes me to my universe and there is something called a virtual portfolio. This is where you get 10K to play with in stocks. Uh, it's pretty much fake money you can invest in and see how you would do in the real market with fake money. So right here, you can see the symbol. You can see how much uh, shares. You can see the last price of Apple. Uh, 170.75. Um, you can see the total cost. It cost me 347.22 for two shares. Uh, so my today's returns and my total returns and their percentages and the company name. Um, I I actually bought this like a couple of days ago. I think I bought it on like Wednesday or Thursday. Um, I didn't really uh get time to go to the up because I had to open up a new thing, Sebi account. The next one uh, is the reports. So this is, if you go here, you go to daily and we go to trading stocks, we land on this page. Trading stock report. We, of course, we can see DNNA, DNAA on this. Um, this stock went up by 200% after hours on Friday. Uh, it went crazy. Um, let's see. If you on this, I'm pretty sure we can find Bed Bath & Beyond on this too. Shout out to Bed Bath & Beyond. Oh, you can see the IG on this. I'm gonna get back to you. Yeah, um, you can see that institution just got out. Um, yeah, you can see things getting out. Pretty much, yeah, this tells you which stocks are gaining, which are not. In the next one, we can go to is the SC13DG report. This is the report. So when institutions like um, Blackstone, BlackRock, uh, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, when they when they get into companies, they be they're buying uh, millions of millions of shares. Uh, they're dumping millions and billions of dollars into these companies. So what they do is that they trade on a forum, it's the dark pool forum. Uh, this helps hide their tracks and also reduces price fluctuations of the asset. So the, if you get your hands on a dark pool print, then you pretty much struck gold mine right there. Dark pool print is very, very helpful. So yeah. Uh, so pretty much when these institutions buy, uh, they have seven to eight days before they have to report it to the SEC and the Security Exchange Commission. And the SEC pretty much makes a report on their website with all the institutions buying uh, which, which stocks and how much they buy. And if they've increased, reduced, they bought new, if they sold off. And pretty much what Think Sabio does is just pulls the reports from the SEC and makes it into an easy to read format chart like this. So you can you can search up you can find anything on this. You can see acquisition, uh, newly bought uh, nine thousand five hundred twenty eight nine million five hundred twenty eight thousand five hundred shares of SMRT.
I mean, you can just look around. You can see um, the best ones. And yeah, um, yeah, you can just look around. Um, you can do filters too. Uh, you can search by symbols. You can search by institutions, uh, sectors, <clears throat> and also by minimum price. So if you don't wanna, if you if you're trying to look for some small stocks, maybe like let's say around around twenty to fifty. Small group like take a minute. Um, Blackstone be increasing it by thirty six million, thirty six point seven mil, and Global increased shares by fifteen point three million. So this is something to look into. Um, that's what Sai Sai said. And yeah. Um, then you can go to Insider Info and go to latest Insider transactions. Right here, we can see. We can see what we have. I don't know what people are doing. Like Kenny Jean, um, the president CEO of PRTA. We see that she's selling off. So she's, so maybe she thinks that the stock will go down. And for most of these reports, we're seeing sales. We're seeing sales all over. So that's also an indication that these people think that the market will fall. Yeah. That's a little, little overview of the Things Savio website. The next one is Simply Wall Street. This is good for fundamental analysis. Pretty much looking at companies' uh, history, pretty much looking at their reports looking at companies' reports. So if y'all want, we can, um, uh, if y'all want, y'all can drop some tickers down below, ticker symbols down below, and I can do um, some research on that for y'all. So it's Okay. You can do that. Um, So we, see we see it's the last price of $890 and a market cap of $929.6 billion. You see right here? You see it has a good future. Um, we see it has a good past and we see it has good health. Um, there's no dividends, I don't think, for the company and its valuation is pretty low uh, according to this. Um, so around, uh, we can look at this. This is, is price history and performance. We can see um, back when it when Tesla launched its IPO. Um, we saw you, you can see the slide. It's steadily moving up. It's doing very good. See right here, it hit, it hit 1,200. And now we are looking at a price of 871. Uh, Tesla stock split will occur, I think, next week. So be on the lookout for that. I would, I would highly encourage you all to invest into the company. Is electric vehicles is going to be the next big thing. You see a 97.6 PE ratio. Yeah. Uh, I highly, uh, according to our rule, um, this is kind of expensive right now, but once the stock splits, uh, it will be become more affordable. Right here, right here, we can see the earnings and revenue. So we see a revenue, this Tesla has a $67.17 billion revenue 
and its cost of revenue is 48.97 billion. So uh, we have gross profit of 18.2 billion and other expenses equal to 8.7 billion. And we can see that the company is currently profitable, which is good. Uh, you see the PE ratio of 97.6. Um, so how does Tesla's PE ratio compared to its peers? Its peers are back at its neutral PE. Like peer average is eight, is eight, and Tesla is at ninety-seven point six. So this is very expensive based on its uh, its rival companies. Um, so you get a whole bunch of good information here. Uh, so you can see Tesla is expensive based on price to earnings ratio over right here. See, yeah, thank you. Uh, over that, read up. Um, we can see, um, errors. We can see the two. Um, very important. You can, I mean, you can just go on this on your own time and just see, um, do some research, and you'll get really good information from this. Then the next one, this is my favorite one. This is Trading View. This is really good for technical analysis. This is what I use to my charts. Um, so we could do PXD. You can try charting PhD. Do something called simple time frame analysis. This is a lot of good traders do. Um, the first thing we is doing trading, but uh, we'll go on one day, one day time. Frame. Chart. That's not really efficient. Uh, you have some indicators on. Uh, you can easily confused on what's going on. And, uh, Rishi, I think your voice is cutting in and out. It's not that people are they can't hear you that well. Going on. Um, hold up, real quick. Okay.
I don't think we can hear you. We, we can't hear you. I know I have to join from my phone. We can hear you now. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, that's much better. All right. Um. Yeah, I don't know what was going on. It was weird. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, you're good now. Sorry. Go okay. ahead. So, um. All right. So then we hop down to the four-hour time frame, and this is where we're gonna draw our trend lines. So pretty much connect the lows with the lows. So right here. Um, it's very important. Uh, we can see that the stock is in an uptrend right now because um, it's above this 50 day moving average. Okay, so I'll tell y'all what these indicators mean real quick. Um, so this first one is this one right here is the MFI indicator. This is the money flow index. And the money flow index shows you overbought and oversold levels. So if this white line becomes comes over here in this oversold level, then the stock will fall down. Um, it will sometimes uh, hit this. This is the overbought level. This is where you want to buy and this is where you want to sell. So right now looking, um, and then this, you see these four lines, these are the SMAs. These are the simple moving averages. The red one is the nine SMA. The green one is the 21 SMA. The blue one is the 50 and the yellow one is the 200. Uh, the nine and 21 are short term. The 50 is medium for swing trading. And the 200 is for long term. So for swing trading, we're going to mainly look at the 50 SMA to figure out um, what trend we are in. And according to this, we see that the stock price is above this 50 day moving average. So it looks like we are in an uptrend. Um, so we hop down. Um, um, we hop down on uh, the one hour time frame and we look, um, I would say um, we will uh, reach back down to 237 because we see that it rejected the price. Uh, it rejected the price of this nine uh, SMA. So we see, we could see a price back down to three to 237 to 38 somewhere around there um so for medium term um i would i would look to get some uh calls if it can hold if it can hold above this um this sma the 200 sma um if it holds above i would uh, we could see this thing going to 257 uh in a short period of time so yeah uh, let's see if y'all want me to do any other stock. I'll do I'll do one other stock.
A A R American Airlines. Let's see. Oh no, this is not American Airlines. Never mind. Okay, so gonna get All right, so we zoom out. Um, okay, so first step, we go on the daily time frame and we draw our key levels. I see one right there. We see a bounce right there. We see a bounce right there. And we see a bounce right here. The next, um, we're gonna look for some support. I see this is a good level too. And this, okay. We see we see a lot of bounces here. We see one bounce, okay, we see one bounce, we see two bounce, three bounce, four bounce, five, six, and seven. And eight right here. So we see a couple bounces here. Um, now we want to go to the four hour time frame. Um, we see that the stock is currently in an uptrend um, for swing trading because it is above this 50 day moving average for 50 day simple moving average. It's above this. So we could um, we could potentially we could see the stock going to 51 uh, 74 somewhere around there. Um, if it breaks through this, we can see 54. And if it doesn't, we will see this fall down to the 50 EMA and uh, we'll see it retest this. So we'll, just, we'll draw a trend line pretty much right here. This is pretty much the trend of the stock. It fell, it broke this trend. It, there was a wedge right here and it fell through the wedge and it broke through its support. So uh, we'll co keep an eye on this. And yeah, uh, looking at this MFI indicator, the money flow index, we see that it's looking to fall in, in, in the near term. So we could probably see a 49, we can see 49 in its um, price. Um, we can go down to the one hour and uh, we're always going to want to adjust this. Um, right here, we can see um, right here, we can see like a downtrend um, on the on the daily. Around the one hour time frame, we see a downtrend. So maybe we could uh, potentially retest this 200 EMA or this 200 SMA single moving average. Um, let's see, PayPal. I don't. I don't keep my. I don't keep my charts um, cluttered because that's not. Um, very uh, efficient for me. It doesn't suit my strategy. So, yeah. So, we want to adjust the chart. Uh, we're on the daily time frame right now. We see resistance right there. We see right here, we see something. Uh, let's see. And right here, we see something good. So, yeah. Um, then we hop down to the four hour time frame. Um, since we're doing swing trading again. Um, we're gonna look at the trend. Um, 
still looks like we're in an uptrend because the price is above the 50 day moving average. This is where we're going to draw trend lines. I'll adjust it on the one hour time frame. Um, but we see that the price it broke through this 21 EMA. So we're going to see this price uh, probably hit. Uh, 94 and then follow this line, follow this line back up. Uh, we'll see this line back, follow this line back up. And we will hopefully see 102. If market conditions are good, we could see 102. Um, and yeah, if market conditions are not good, uh, then we will see a drop in the stock to 92. So you're always gonna wanna keep an eye on this. You're gonna wanna keep an eye on this. Hop down to the one hour time frame, And just, we see, we could probably see this thing going down, up, down. And then right here, this will be a make or break situation. Um, this is where um, if news come out good, then stock will go up. Uh, if news comes out bad, then it will keep on going down to 92. So yeah, that pretty much concludes today's session. Um, I hope y'all learned something important.